and we won't read this verbatim, but I think we can get a really good feel of like where RH's attorneys are going with this, with these five points. Um, so essentially just kind of looking at a recap of the first thing they said. So in this civil enforcement action, the SEC seeks to further cement a role. It has assumed for itself as the global governor of blockchain technology, a role exceeding both the agency's limited mandate and the bounds of personal uh, jurisdiction. Um, the SEC is suing Richard Hart, who lives in a foreign country, and somehow they're suing three blockchain software programs, Hex, Pulse Chain, and PulseX, which the SEC claims to be unincorporated alter egos of Mr. Hart. Um, these open source communication technologies are used and enjoyed by a decentralized community of thousands of people across the world. Yet the SEC says that they violated U.S. securities laws by offering and selling the SEC's novel construction dubs uh, crypto asset securities. Um, so let's get to so the first point that they're really uh, arguing here. And they, again, this is the motion to dismiss. So this would be like if the judge would take a look at this and um, find that these complaints by the SEC are just that ridiculous that they would dismiss it. None of us, and I'll just say this now, Ewok nor I think that we're going to get like some kind of total dismissal from this and the case goes away. We talked about this last week. I think that's probably an asinine proposition and people should prepare that that's not going to be the case. That said, um, this kind of gives you an idea of where his attorneys are coming from and how strong they are positioned for this case. Um, but the first point is that the lawsuit cannot escape the starting gate because exercising personal jurisdiction over Richard Hart in this case uh, could not would not comport with due process. Mr. Hart lives abroad and is not alleged to have set foot in the United States during the relevant period, nor is he alleged to have engaged in any conduct directed at the United States. The SEC alleges no U.S. based entities, employees, contracts, payment accounts, blah, 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 uh, or travel associated with Mr. Hart. The general availability of Mr. Hart's speech on the Internet and the alleged presence of some unquantified number of participants in the United States cannot satisfy the requirements for asserting personal jurisdiction uh, because the defendant himself must purposefully reach out and establish sufficient minimum contacts with the U.S. So there's more there. But Ewok, we've talked about this point um, many times. Um, yep. they, they, the SEC try to throw at the wall that like, well, some of the hex transactions, you know, they occur on Uniswap and at least one developer of Uniswap is located in the Southern District of New York and at least one hex investor. You know, it's like, OK, well, that may be true of Omaha, Nebraska as well. So, you know, what <laughs> right. what gives this to you? So, um, yeah. What, what do you make of this first point here? I mean, they, well, they've always gone after it. Yeah. Jurisdiction, I think, is one of their I mean, they made it point number one for a reason. I think they it's one of the strongest legs they have to stand on. Uh, you and I were talking about this this afternoon, and I, I wondered, because they don't have jurisdiction, is is he still protected or is, I mean, I guess the blockchain is the blockchain, right? That's the argument of it being protected by the First Amendment, which blockchain is freedom of speech. But I, I guess my question to you, and I will throw it out to the chat and see what they say, uh, but, you know, because they are out of jurisdiction, is he still protected by the Constitution at all? Um, does the Constitution protect people that are foreign to the United States? Um, you know, I've I wondered how much that can play into, you know, you're either going to say um, you're out of our jurisdiction and then this stuff doesn't really mean a whole lot, um, or you aren't and then you can use the constitution the first amendment freedom of speech things like that um in your favor and that was my question to you this afternoon i think i mentioned it and i was like just confused about it a little bit i don't know if it really covers him at all um but again it is the strongest argument that they have even according to nuclear herbs it's one of the ones that they you know feel the strongest about mm -hmm. that you know could get some of this um, dismissed. I do believe uh, that a few of these things will be dismissed, uh, but, you know, I, I still think the judge will want to hear both sides of course, in, as far as some of the other things, like um, being maybe a security uh, as far as hex, but, you know, there was a lot of planning that went into that to kind of, fail the Howey test on purpose. Right. Um, and, and once that education kind of happens, so what I'm hope this is what I'm personally hoping for is there's uh, several dismissals, several of the, you know, the 
illegitimate funds uh, that were spent or or whatever with the the whole time machine things, which we'll get to that too, um, and uh, some of the entity like they like where they say they can't go after the entity. There is no buddy there. Like you can't right. call something uh, to court who can't defend themselves, um, and that's what essentially they are. So those couple things I do believe uh, will get dismissed uh but i think some of this will will hang up and drag out for quite some time unfortunately yeah and, and we've talked about that possibility that maybe the new stuff paul's chain paul saxon stuff like that um you know could could skate here um with you know this kind of faulty lawsuit um but that you know maybe e hex could end up being the lame duck there was speculation about that because of rh with his tweet before um, and the fact that EHEX was already around and do they actually, will the judge decide that they actually have any, that the SEC has any grounds on that point? So, right. um, Hex Couple girl. Moments. Yeah. Go ahead. Richard yeah. is still a U.S. citizen, so the Constitution would apply to him unless he gave up his citizenship. And Rolando says the SEC is bound to freedom of speech law. Code is protected by freedom of speech. So, okay. yeah, I Excellent. wasn't necessarily talking about the code or the blockchain Right, um, because that would be covered no matter where it was. Obviously, it's in the United States, uh, so that would be covered by freedom of speech. Uh, I'm, I'm more pointing to to Richard at this point, though, and I, I do agree with Hexgirl that you know I, I he is still a citizen. So yeah, I, I just didn't know. Yeah, I I don't know if he gave up citizenship or not. I I, I doubt it, uh, but I don't know for sure. 